YouTube Nation. Maven TV, aka me TV, aka I rope a dope, folks who fall for the okie doke. We're gonna talk about the rope a dope real quick because we're gonna talk about boxing. Now, you guys have been asking me during the week, you know, am I gonna talk about it because you wanna hear what I have to say about it. Now, we talked about it on Twitter, we talked about it in private messages and things of that nature. So, let's get into this. For those who don't know, Manny Pacquiao and on the fan page, Manny Pacquiao has said that he will fight Floyd Mayweather. However, he is saying that the money isn't right. That's what he's saying. And you know what? I have a big problem with this due to the fact that if the money is right, this is the biggest payday, all right, that boxing has ever seen. What do you mean the money isn't right? So we looked into it some more, all right? And for everyone who keeps saying that Floyd is ducking Manny or Manny's ducking Floyd, this has nothing to do with it, all right? Neither fighter are scared of each other at this point, even though I know a lot of people will question after what Manny, you know, his last performance, a lot of people won't question, you know, if Manny can really deal with him. But that's not what we're talking about today, all right? What we're talking about is the financial part. Now, you have to understand that this is the biggest payday, all right? And if Manny's group is still falling back, this falls on Bob Arum. This does. This falls back on, you have to understand, people, all right? In boxing, for a long time, promoters took advantage of boxers, all right? We saw this with Mike Tyson and Don King. We, you should know this by now. Now, and I'll play this. I know a lot of people hate Floyd Mayweather. But if it wasn't for people like Floyd Mayweather and Bernard Hopkins, for those who remember, they are smart enough to know what their money is, where their money is going, how the deals are set up. We're starting to see this more and more now, so promoters can't take advantage of said boxer. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Floyd knows his money. All right? Now, Floyd came out and said that he talked to Manny on the phone. All right? Now, I'm going to the links in the info bar for you guys. All right? Said he talked to Manny on the phone and said that, you know, Manny isn't the sharpest. That's what he said. Now, I have to disagree due to the fact that isn't Manny like a political official? So, I'm not going to say he's not the sharpest. All right? But his camp clearly has problems with money right now. It does. It has. To, it, that, that's the only way I see it. There's no way you can walk away from this big of a payday. They have made it known now. This is about money. This is not about heart. This is not about fighting styles. It's about nothing else. Drug tests or anything. It's not about that anymore. All right. This is about money. And you have to look at Bob Arum on this. Like I said, Bernard Hopkins went through this a long time ago with boxing. How many times they tried to kick him out because he was setting up his own deals? Do you remember when he beat Trinidad? How he had to gamble on himself? In order to make some money, like, guys, you have to understand, this is bigger than just two fighters wanting to fight each other. It really is. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the way it should go down. Floyd is doing the right thing, and he goes on to say that, you know, Manny's complaining about not having money on the back end. That's not Floyd's problem, all right? That's not his camp's problem. That is obviously something going on in Manny's camp, all right? Every time Manny gets something good, and you see Floyd's reaction, he's just like, that's it? Because he's not impressed because of the fact that all the financial things that he knows, it doesn't add up. And I'll pull like this for example. When Manny got his deal with Nike, what happened? Floyd was like, ooh, you got your deal with Nike. Because he he's, he's expects more from Manny. That's why I think it is. He expects more from You have to be smarter in these type of deals. You can't let your camp just run you into the ground. Or th You know, I understand the camp is supposed to be for him and protect him at all costs. But because it is an investment. Come on, let's be honest here. All right? There's a reason why they're called prize fighters. They fight for money. They don't fight for free. I know some of you guys are telling me, you know, it's like after all that Floyd has said to him, he would fight him for, you know, he should, I would fight him for free if he said that to me. I understand that. But they're prize fighters. You also have to understand that Manny Pacquiao, not too long ago, I believe it was in 2009 or so, he tried to, um, he sued Floyd Mayweather for the, you know, the whole steroid thing. For defamation of character. So understand, this comes down to money. It does. <laughs> That's what this comes down to. Man, guy, I'm telling you, it just, it just gets worse and worse, it does. But Floyd says that he doesn't, you know, it's going to be hard for this fight to even happen due to the fact that their camps can't come to some type of understanding or agreement when it comes to money. And that's what's holding this up, money. It has nothing to do else with heart, boxing skills, nothing. Drug tests, nothing. This is about money at this point. And Floyd really wanted this fight, he says, you know, before, you know, because he's getting ready to go to jail. So Floyd really did want this fight, but it seems like he's got to fight Cotto, and he's not going to take Cotto, you know, lightly either. Cotto says he has the power. Cotto's looking to do some damage. And you know what? If he can get past Floyd's defense, which we all know is very tough, all right, because we know what Floyd can do, Cotto has a shot. I'm not going to count Cotto out. I really do think Mayweather will beat Cotto because of the fact just, just by technical boxing prowess in general, all right, and athleticism. But I'm not going to count Cotto out. He has a puncher's chance. He does, all right? He's, he's good enough to know. I picked Cotto when he fought Margarito. I say, Cotto's going to destroy that guy. And he went out there and he destroyed Margarito, all right? So, I, like I said, 
I'm going to give him a puncher's chance, but I'm still going to roll with Floyd on this one. Now, I have to say this because, like I said, boxers, they have to smarten up when it comes to their money. You do not want to end up like Evander Holyfield. Have you seen lately what's going on with Evander Holyfield? He's still fighting. Not because, like, Bernard, where he's fighting because, you know, he wants to prove himself and there's a championship. No. Evander Holyfield is fighting because he needs money. If anyone's been was it paying attention to his financial, you know, problems... He's got so much back payment and, and child support and things, he has to fight. You could probably offer Evander Holyfield right now $20 to fight in the alley. He'd probably take you on it, all right? He needs money. All right? It's just really that simple. But, guys, I really need to move on. I, I will be keeping up on this boxing thing, you know, with this money issue, as, as, more as, um, as soon as we get more information, all right? But I really do feel at this point the only person you should be blaming right now is Bob Arrow. I'm just saying. Now, I want to move on and talk about basketball a little bit, all right? Because the Clippers... I don't understand what's going on with that organization. You just finished trashing your number one fan. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, we're going to talk about Clipper Donald. You'll know what he looks like. This is what he looks like. Now, Clipper Donald, I'm, you know what? I mean, Clipper Darrell. That's my fault. Clipper Darrell. That's his name. That's what they coined his name, all right? Clipper Darrell has been with this organization or been a fan of this organization even when the Clippers were garbage. Not before they were just went. No, no. This is nothing new. He's been there for years, all right? He's been there time and time again. The reason why the Clippers are making him drop the Clipper part of his name is because of the fact that he's selling T-shirts in the parking lot with that say Clipper Darrell on it. They feel as though they should have a part of that, uh, that part of that money. Selling t-shirts. Do you really think that he's making that much money off of t-shirts? Really, really Clippers organization? And I know a lot of Clipper fans are saying this is only the work of Donald Sterling. And you know what? It is. He's solid. He's trying to take an op you know, trying to take advantage of an opportunity. And we know how bad the management is when it comes to Mr. Sterling's, you know, decisions when it comes to the Clippers. All right. So I understand Clipper fans, you're pissed off, and this is only making things worse. It is. However, you have to understand the Clipper name, this it is their name. You cannot make money off of their intellectual property. However, I will say this again, all right? He did not come up with the name Clipper Darrell. All right, he just didn't. Understand that, all right? The media came up with that name. They coined that phrase. There was even one point, at one point, was it Mark Cuban was trying to pay this guy to be a fan of the Mavericks because he was such a hardcore fan of the Clippers. You have to understand, Clipper fans, you should be mad at the fact that this guy is pretty much being run out. And they tried to give him a contract too, all right? The Clippers wanted to make a deal with him. He said no, all right? So they said, all right, well, since you don't want the deal, you know, Shut down the name. We want you to take out the name. Even though he didn't come up with the name. All right. But they want him to get rid of the name. It just, it was something the media came up with and he just called on to fire. That's all it was. But you can't treat your fans this way. And Clipper fans, I feel bad for you due to the fact that, but like this, they're willing to do that to your number one fan who's been there for years and years. Imagine how they'll treat you. Yeah. Just imagine how they'll treat you. Anyways, we need to move on because we need to talk about more basketball. All right. For those who did not see what happened at the Cal game, we'll talk about this. A coach kicked a player. That's right. He kicked a player trying to save a ball going out of bounds. Let's look at that real quick. Kind of an ugly thing happened at the Arizona Cal game, Pac-12 basketball. Jorge Gutierrez, the hustle right there into the Arizona bench. And we've got some unhappiness from Gutierrez and assistant coach Joe Pasternak right there. As Gutierrez may be reacting to how Pasternak took the uh, the fall into his lap. Coach Miller trying to uh, calm down Gutierrez and Coach Montgomery, his coach from Cal, will come in here. Pasternak, by the way, uh, uh, excuse me, Pasternak used to be a Cal assistant. All right. Now, from what we heard so far, the coach, Joe Pasternak, says that he actually didn't kick the player. That's right. He's saying he did the action, but he actually didn't make contact. Now, first off, it's unprofessional either way, all right? And there hasn't been any type of repercussions on the coach's part. So we don't know how this is going to play out. However, the player did not shake his hand after the game because he felt it was purposely done to him, all right? Which I can understand. I mean, you're actually just going trying to save a ball. You're doing your job. You're doing what you're actually, dare I say, paid for as a college player because I'm sure you have a scholarship so you're actually doing what you're supposed to do and it, it, just in the game in general all right and you have a coach go off on you like that yeah something's got to be done you cannot do that you just can't I don't care if it lands or not you cannot show that type of emotion on the side from a coach you can't all right but anyways we'll see what happens to that in the long run now I need to move on about more basketball I need to talk about the Sixers now look I'm getting a little pissed off at the Sixers all right we have dropped six of the last seven I have to talk about this because if anyone saw the Oklahoma City game it was pretty much 
a re pretty much a rewind of the Clippers game. All right, it came down to at the end in the fourth, Lou Will trapped on the baseline again, and his teammates just standing there like this and watching. Not trying to help him out or anything. He's double teamed. He's trapped on the baseline, which if anyone knows basketball, the worst thing you can do is get trapped near the baseline, near the sideline. You do not. That's the worst place to get trapped at. Worst place, all right? Your teammates aren't helping you out. And this is why I don't understand. For our team to be so much prided off of defense, how do you let Russell Westbrook get all those offensive rebounds, especially at the end after foul shots? What's wrong with you, all right? And talking about coaching, I don't understand this. I understand people love Doug Collins, but the Oklahoma City game shows you exactly how much he did not coach, all right? Now, for those who don't know, off the switch, what happened? We always saw Drew Holiday and Durant. Did we not? Drew Holiday versus Durant is a joke to begin with, all right? That's that's not going to do anything. But you have to understand that that was purposely done. They ran that play like five times straight. That's why Drew Holiday was always on them. They ran the same play on the switch, and the coach never defensively adjusted. That's why Durant was killing us in points in the fourth. You have to understand, guys. It Once that fight happened between, I don't even want to call it a fight. It was a joke, all right, between Durant and Evan Turner. Now, put it like this. Durant brought his elbow up. All right, he brought his elbow up. That's intent. He should have been. He should have been ejected. He should have. But you know they're not going to eject Durant. Like I've said before, Kevin Durant. A toss up between Kobe and Durant as being the best players in the league. Durant showed exactly what he was about. Once that fight happened, what happened? Soon as the fight was over, the, the argument was over. What happened? He ran down there on the court and drilled a three right in the face. Right in Nicolau's face. All star defense. Right. Look, you have to understand that the Sixers. People have caught on. They have. All right. Now, I understand you're going to say, oh, well, we beat the Detroit Pistons. No disrespect to Detroit, all right, to the D, but come on, it's the Pistons, all right? Even they know they're having problems right now, all right? And, yeah, and your boy Future Stucky, I see he's still trying to do a thing, but come on. Detroit knows they're having problems right now. The fans know, all right? But I put it like this. You can't go up against OKC. I know, I know you want to say, well, it's the best team in the league, and we played them with heart. No, that, you have to understand from a basketball mentality, it doesn't matter if you played with heart. All right, you either win or you lose. That's what it comes down to, y'all. Won't you understand? You think if I went out on the court and we played against a good team and we still lost, I'd be like, but we showed heart. No, I'm gonna be pissed off because we lost, because we tried so hard, but we lost. But the Sixers down the stretch didn't finish. And the thing is, you guys talked to me about this, uh, was it on Twitter as well? We've seen this time and time again. Last year, we couldn't even finish games, all right? We couldn't. In the fourth quarter, they would give up, all right? Now, it's not even about giving up in the fourth quarter because they've proven that they can win in the fourth quarter. It's just they have so many mental lapses, turnovers. It's just not, no rebounding. It's just, it, it, if you look at the rebounding in the paint, second, third chances, it, it makes no sense to me. It just doesn't, all right? And you have to understand that that comes down to a coaching problem. It's also a size problem, which we've already talked about in the beginning of the year, all right? But it's a coaching problem. It really is. You have to understand this. This running transition offense is going to catch up with us. We're going to get tired and we're going to burn ourselves out. And you guys have said it in the comments before. All right. It will. You have to understand that these teams are not playing. They are not. You can't let just not too long ago. You let the Spurs come in. You let Tony Parker come in and get 37 points. Are you crazy? I'll put it like this. When someone is that hot, and I don't want to sound nasty, but when someone is that hot, and I've said before I don't like Tony Parker, all right, because he's a flop machine. It's all he does is throw himself all over the floor. You bring the goon in to touch him up a little bit, all right, when someone's that hot. You let him know, look, you're not just going to come in here and act a fool like that. You're not going to be putting all these points on us like that. You got to bring somebody in there and knock him on his ass. That's what you got to do at times. And, yeah, it's nasty, it's goonish, but the NBA does it, all right? And our goon, who used to be, he's gone now, because that used to be Spates. Spates used to come in and do it, all right? So, hey, I'm just telling you. But the fact is, the Sixers, they do this time and time again, and it makes me mad, all right? We get into the fourth. They didn't score for, was it, four minutes or something in the fourth quarter? No, I'm sorry. They, they had one bucket in five, I was it, five minutes and 41 seconds in the fourth. That's right. They went that long before scoring a bucket. So it goes to show you that, they actually had the game won because they went on that run, but they beat themselves. They beat themselves because they didn't stay disciplined. And the thing is, OKC okay, in the last two games between the Sixers and anyone saw the Magic game, they did the same thing in the stretch. They broke down mentally in the stretch. At the end, foul shots getting to them. Like, they just make bad decisions, defensive decisions. Anyone who saw the Orlando Magic game, was it Richardson, Jay Rich, he had a chance to knock down a three, all right, because lack of defense, all right? And they could have won that game. I'm sorry, they could have tied the game. Or won it. I believe they could have tied the game. But it's it goes to show you, OKC, even though they're the best team right now in the NBA, 
they still have problems. They still can be beaten, all right? They can. They're six man. I know a lot of people love Dan Harden, but he's inconsistent. And he had the nerve to talk trash to Kobe. Was it last week? You kidding me? Are you are you serious, Dan Harden? All right, stop that. Stop. All right. And even though no matter how bad Durant and Westbrook played against the Sixers, you know, in the fourth, they stepped it up when they need to. All right. But during the stretch throughout the whole game, they looked really bad. Westbrook had a lot of turnovers, and people jumped on him, but they don't jump on Jeremy Lin. And they won. And then OKC won. I don't, I don't get this. But, you know, it, it doesn't matter. I need to move on. All right, Sixers, you really have to do something. You have the Bulls and you have the Celtics coming up. You have to win those games. All right, you have to. I see the bandwagon. The bandwagon have left. The CEO, he's on a ledge somewhere getting ready to kill himself. All right, welcome to Philly. All right, but let's move on. I want to talk about football real quick in this video. Guys, man, Heinz Ward. All right, y'all want me to talk about this. Heinz Ward. Is uh, was it? He's been released from the Steelers after 14 seasons, and you guys are asking me, do you think he'll retire? No, he will not retire. Yeah, I know y'all hear it, but it doesn't matter. He won't retire. As far as I'm concerned, he will be looking for another team to play next year. Now, I'll look for an article after this video and see if I can find some type of statement from Heinz Ward saying, you know, he'll be looking for another team. But you should know by now, regardless, he is still a good receiver. He will be looking to play next year. All right. I'm sure he'll weigh his options and then see if it's worth it. And then he'll decide if he wants to retire or not. But nine times out of 10, he's still in great shape. He can still be a, an effective receiver. He'll find another team to play for. Anyways, guys, I'm done for this weekend. Hopefully, I have a good weekend. I knew I was going to do another video. I just wasn't sure on what information came out sports-wise, but it doesn't matter. I will talk to y'all later. Y'all be safe. I'm out.